How's it going everybody? This is Tao, back for another video for you guys. Um, so, in the last few months I've been collecting some footages and some content. Hopefully I make it into a good video for you guys. Now here's me running my uh, Romanian Champion 556 that we talked about in my last video. I got it rebarreled. Um, just test it out. Um, this is the, our local uh, AK event. The Wolverine uh, Wednesday or something happened on Sunday, so we call it the Soviet Sunday. This was uh, in February, the February uh, month's event. Um, yeah, this gun run pretty good. Everything as as expected. Uh, pretty smooth, pretty soft shooting. Um, so after this first stage, I decided to try something different. So right before this event, I just got my Regacillium. MG7K 30 cal suppressor approved, so I, would, I was able to bring it with me and try it out. So on the next stage, I decided to put it on the gun this, and try it out. But prior to this, I have not shot or test this can particularly. Um, we only did the testing with my Nomad, so you see in my last video. So we came to the conclusion that I either need a hotter ammo or uh, a reduced power spring. So I ended up doing another test. Uh, but I don't have it on video. So what we did is uh, we grabbed the, the KNS Precision and Reduce Power Spring, uh, dropped it in there, and then turned the gas uh, setting down to the uh, lowest gas setting. Now, with the Nomad, with that combo, it runs, I try both steel case and brass case 223 ammo. Uh, it runs 100%, no, no, no malfunctions. I tried a couple mags, so I figured it would be good from there. But um, this MG7K seems like it's, little smaller than a Nomad, so it does different reactions uh, to the gun. It's, I think I'm losing a bit of uh, uh, energy and pressure to to cycle the gun. I mean, with the breast case ammo, the 223s, two, two um, this, with this can, it's about 80% reliable. Um, you would get, I got maybe a couple malfunctions, but with steel case, it's a lot less reliable and it's almost every other round that would have malfunction because just way under gas. So I tried to find it after this stage, I decided to find a fix for it. So what I did is I tuned the gas back up to the normal gas setting. Um, and then I swap out the reduced power spring to a extra power spring. Now, the reason why I do that is when I try to suppress uh, before with a regular spring that just like a standard AK recoil spring, it was kind of, uh, you know, quite gassy. Um, so I figured with, to maybe just slow down a little bit, slow down the bow a little bit, um, just a little more resistant. I'll put a strong spring in there and see how it does. Um, so I did that and uh, we did maybe like a mag or two of testing with both brass and steel and it, it functions with a suppressor, of course, with this particular suppressor. So I decided to leave it as it is and go to the next stage. It, indeed, it worked. Um, I, was, I was able to finish this one with, with no problem at all. Um, I think I did all right. And so it's a little bit over gas than what it was before, but it's almost the same level as how it was without a suppressor. Um, I don't feel like there was much gas to the face anymore because the, the, the extra power spring was slowing the bolt down. So it let the pressure drop in the front before it cycles back. Um, so yeah, so the con I guess the conclusion with this gun is that I either course need a, probably hotter ammo to be able to use the loose uh, the reduced power spring with the low gas setting or um, get a dedicated 556 can and mount down there and see what it does I mean at the time when uh, when this this video was recorded I didn't have any 556 cans um, but just recently I picked up a uh, uh, Panolin uh, auto creep labs Panolium and also uh, uh, Yankee Hill machinery uh, turbo K so down maybe later on i'll do some testing with them i just haven't got around to do that and also uh, they're on a different mounting system right now uh, for the time being i have my dead air wolfman on, mounted on this gun um, the wolfman i think is a very good can it's for it being a, a nine millimeter suppressor it can handle uh, Calibers like 762 by 39 or 556223, starting to blackout, and it's very versatile. And the best part is it's, it's really compact. We use the short form, and it's very lightweight. 
uh, even with the uh, chemo uh, key micro adapter installed um, it sounds pretty good on this gun too on this 556 so i have it put in the video behind after this you guys can get to hear it All right, so this is the uh, footage from this past Soviet Sunday we had in uh, this month, this month of April. Um, it's a two gun again, so it's a uh, handgun with AKs. Uh, they brought a two gun since uh, last month's event it's from Mar in March. Um, I think it's a great idea because uh, most of us definitely don't shoot handguns enough. Uh, they give us a little more practice and more reason to practice. Um, the thing is, uh, very cool or fun and challenging as well. Um, another thing I want to talk about here too, is, uh, I ended up finding another host for the, uh, Rexilium NG7K 30 cal. Um, so as you can see here, I have a mount, uh, attached to my Galileo Ace, uh, 76 by 39 SBR. Um, I think being a 30 cal can, it will be more beneficial on the 30 cal gun and also the size and weight feel just about right for uh, for this setup uh, it's not too small not too too long I think sounds pretty good I also picked up a, another K class can it's the uh, Aero Precision uh, Lahar 30k it's a little shorter than the MG 7k here but it's also hub compatible so you can use almost any adapter on the market that's uh, using the hub system the 1 and 3 8 by 24 threads so I did a little comparison myself and I decided to let put the MG7K on the Scalio and then I put the Lahar 30K on my uh, 107CR, which is the uh, AK-104 clone. Now the 107CR has the 12.5 inch barrel, so by adding a KK in front of it, it still keeps the overall length down, um, keep the weight down, and also the suppression, it's a little easier to contain than the eight inch barrel. Now with both these cans, I was able to acquire them uh, below 450. So I found some deals and I, as soon as I saw them, I jumped on it. In the Lahar 30K, I, I was even able to take advantage of the uh, the fast uh, E-Form e form 4's uh, fast approvals uh, recently. So that one got approved made within the three days. So I was pretty shocked. And because of the fast approvals, I was pretty encouraged to, to get another can. So I started looking for uh, a dedicated caliber can. So I came across one of those uh, Otter Creek Labs uh, Pinoleum, Pinoleum 5.56. And I had it attached to um, my 5.45 Galil here, as you can see. It's uh, also inch barrel, but chambered in 5.45 by 39. I am in love with this setup. This can, this gun, this caliber, and how they shoot, how they sound. I had never shot anything like this. Now, one thing I do have to say about this can is that it's back pressure. Um, it's definitely more gassier than some of the cans out there. Um, but for me, it's an issue because I have the can has precision adjustable gas piston inside. So, but with this can, I was able to go fully open on it. Whereas my 30 cal cans, I just have to do like a four click open. That's it. And you'll see the video after this. I have used tried the MG7K on this gun um, with that piston fully open, and it wasn't even cycling. But for polonium, it cycles pretty nice. Um, and I also have all the sound comparisons at the end as well, so you guys get to hear it. Well, I hope you guys like this video. And if any questions or any thoughts, feel free to comment down below. Again, thanks for watching, and please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next one.
Yeah, because it's a 30 cal can. You just don't have the pressure for it. But there's like no gas. <laughs> Shoot it like a boat gun. Thank <laughs> you.